श्री स्वामीनारायण भगवान नी जय अक्षर पुरुषोत्तम महाराज नी जय प्रमुख स्वामी महाराज नी जय महंत स्वामी महाराज नी जय प्रमुख स्वामी महाराज शताब्दी महोत्सव नी जय एज वी बिगिन the assessment classes of puja pramukh sai maharaj's jeevan charitra we are looking at assessment g which are pages 314 to 366 and the years are from 1964 to 1965 we'll start with g1 which is on page 314 now pramukh sai maharaj was in mumbai during december 1963 and january 1964 Shastri ji Maharaj's uh, birth centennial celebrations were scheduled to take place in Atladhara in 1964. The celebrations were still 13 months away. But during this stay in Mumbai, Pramukh Sai Maharaj already began his efforts to help work towards the celebrations. And he proposed an idea and to to the initiated basically the publication of a souvenir which was named Yagna Purush Smruti. The souvenir was a project to commemorate the life and work of his guru shastri ji maharaj swami shri he he held detailed discussions with puja mohan sai maharaj puja ishwar charan swami and many others on publishing this souvenir which was based on the life and work of shastri ji maharaj and this was something very interesting about the life of uh, pramukh sai maharaj that the way he worked as well his ability to plan for projects in such a timely manner because even though shastri ji maharaj's um, you know the the birth centenary celebrations were still 13 months away yet pramukh sai maharaj had already begun the process way in advance so you could see the project management if you want to call it or the way he planned it and this is something we noticed throughout his entire life all the projects that swami shri had undertaken the mandirs and all the other projects that was his work style and what that did was it made it so much easier for all those who did seva with him it gave everybody you know sufficient time to accomplish any other tasks that needed to be done any corrections that needed to be made and this is the way that swami shri was very effective in the way he worked and that's why everybody enjoyed working with him well let's move on to g2 so after finishing his um, stay in mumbai swami shri then eventually traveled to atladra they were to celebrate the vasant panchmi celebrations over there The celebrations took place on the 19th of January 1964 and it was celebrated in the presence of almost 8000 devotees. To just think back then this is 1964 so many hari bhaktos were still gathering for such events and during the assembly Pramukh Sai Maharaj he spoke and he addressed the assembly something very nice that he said it is better done than said if applied in actions rather than speech victory is not far at all even at the cost of one's life one's own life do not let go of dharma the festival of celebrating the shikshapatri's anniversary can be considered accomplished only when everyone totally abides by its agna swami was always a propagator and in, uh, somebody who always encouraged people to follow the niyams that were prescribed by bhagwan swami narayan that was obviously a very important part of his life but he also encouraged that in all the hari bhaktos which is why which is something that swami would co- constantly reiterate after the fel- after the celebrations of vasant panchmi in atladra pramukh sai maharaj eventually then went to anand and in anand swami did the pratishta of a painted murti of yogi ji maharaj which was at the local mandir over there and then swami came back to atladra so we can see that swami's vicharan is a little bit uh, getting slowly we can see how hectic swami's vicharan is beginning to become let's move on to g3 Swami was in Atladra and after he stayed in Atladra eventually uh, Swami Shri then went to Bochasan Gondal he went to Amdavad Sejakua Goriad Antoli and many other other villages eventually Swami then came to Vidyanagar the reason for going to Vidyanagar was very unique because the whole idea was that there were many uh, youths who were studying in Vidyanagar and they had always had a wish that Pramukh Swami Maharaj would come and visit them in their apartments in their rooms and so this was the whole project to do the padramnis in each of the rooms of all the students and not just a padramni but swami was also going to install a murti in all the rooms over there of all the satsangi students that were studying in vidyanagar it wasn't in just one location but they were all staying in different hostels in different uh, locations so swami would engage with all these yuvaks 
And it's interesting to see that despite so many other projects that were ongoing, yet for Swami, this was a very important thing, to connect with all the Hari Bhaktos, to engage them in satsang. And the way he would put the murti in each of the rooms, as if it was like a murti prateshta of a big mandir. For Pramukh Sai Maharaj, whether it was the murti prateshta of a big mandir, or it was you know, just installing a murti in, in one of the students' uh, dormitories or their residence halls, for Swami Shri it was the same. And this was Swami's bond with the, with the youth at that time. Kunadan Swami Avat Karishane ke Santana Radema Bhagwan Che Te Apne Bhagwan Ape Che. And this is exactly what we saw in Pramukh Sai Maharaj's life. Let's move on to G4. So from Vidyanagar, Pramukh Sai Maharaj then came to Sarampur. In Sarampur, they were celebrating the Fuldol Utsav. And after the celebrations, Swami's vision just carried on. Eventually, Swami came to Amdavad. And while he was in Amdavad, he received the news of the passing away of Harman Kaka. Harman Bhai was a very uh, dedicated senior Hari Bhakta, pioneer of satsang in Africa. We all know um, uh, VH Kaka and all these other Hari Bhaktos. So VH Kaka na, Purvashram na, Father Thai. And so Harman Kaka had passed away on, on the 10th of March. And Pramukh Sai Maharaj offered a very touching tribute to him. Pramukh Sai Maharaj said, Ke Muktaraj puja Harman Bhai na achanak dhamma java thi, Apanne mahan khot padi che. Akha gunatit mandade agat anubhavyo che. Manepan mara ek nikatana sati gumavya jeu duk thayu che. Teo vaivatma khub madatrup temaj mark darshak hata. Pan Swami Maharaj tata shaseji Maharaj ne gamyu te kharu. We can see how close Harman Kaka was to Pramukh Sai Maharaj in the words that he says over here. Mane pan mara ek nikatana sati. Sati means a very close friend of mine. And I can feel that. So this was, uh, these were Swami's words over there. And then next, Puja Yogiji Maharaj came into. And Yogiji Maharaj also then uh, offered his uh, Anjali. And he said, Ke Param Bhagwadi Harman Bhai Pramukh Swami ne khara madadgar hata. Jete kamama pote hajar reta. Teti Pramukh Swami ne dukh thayu. Pan Swami Sriji ne gamyu te kharu. We can see that even Yogi Bapa reiterated this. You know, for the way Sriji Maharaj has said in the Vachitamrat in Kadra section 3, number 21, Kya amara toje sacha vaishnav satsangi chen e jamara saga wala chen. They are my true kith and kin. And we can see this resonating in Swami Sri's life as well. Eventually, Swami Sri then carried on his vichran. His vichran is now in the northern part of Gujarat where his vision took him to all sorts of villages. He went to Kiol, Anandpura, Dangarwa, Karjisan, Vadu, Bhaupura, Mokhasan. All these villages are in the Mesana area, which is in northern parts of Gujarat. And in every village, Yogiji Maharaj and Pramukh Sai Maharaj, you know, they were welcomed in a very grand way. They were, you know, they were made to sit in a palaquin. And Pramukh Sai Maharaj and Yogiji Maharaj, they were there for eight days. But they made sure, and Pramukh Sai Maharaj in particular made sure that because Yogi Ji Maharaj was still not probably able to go do all the Padramnis, so on behalf of him, Pramukh Sai Maharaj had to do all the Padramnis. And they visited each and every Hari Bhakta's house personally, just to think that in Karjisan, Pramukh Sai Maharaj visited 175 homes. Now think of it, this is an eight day span of different villages, but while he was in Karjisan, 175 homes. And then he covered about 78 to 80 other homes in the remaining other villages, Vadu, Mokhasan, etc. Not just Padramni, but he also had to do the Kathavarta. So he would do, deliver the discourses, and at the same time, he also had to do the Padramnis in a span of eight days. From there, again, we can see how grueling the work carries on. It's not just Padramnis and Kathavarta, but from there, Swami headed towards the Charota region. And in that area, Swami came to Anand, Karamsad, and Nadiad. And basically, the objective over here was to collect the yearly donations of Tuerni Dada. Tuerni Dada ni ugrani karwani hati. And so you can imagine, on the one hand, he's doing Padramnis, Parayan, and now he also has to collect uh, the donations for Tuerni Dada. Again, this is something that we would use in the Sansta for our festivals and Utsavas and things like that. One man show, running the show everywhere. From there, Swami then went to Vidyanagar. And in Vidyanagar, there was a special uh, gathering a special satsang gathering. It was held in the assembly hall of uh, VP Science College, Vithal Bhai Patel Science College. Lots of students, principals, and professors from various colleges in Vidyanagar had attended uh, in large numbers to this event. Pramukh Sai Maharaj had a very incredible way of connecting with everyone across all different generations, 
depending on their education, Swami was able to articulate and speak because he spoke from the heart. It was received very, very well. So even his speeches, they were catered to all, the st all sorts of audiences. In short, this was almost like Swami doing campus sabhas. Today we hear about campus sabhas, but Pramukh Sahib Maharaj used to do them back in his day as well. Let's move on to G5. A well-wisher by the name of Ambalal Bhai Patel had very generously donated a piece of land to the Sansta. And his idea was that we wanted to build a student hostel in Vidyanagar. And so on the 21st of March, 1964, Yogiji Maharaj and Pramukh Sai Maharaj, they offered the ritual prayers and they did the Bhumi Pujan to start off the project. And the land was in a very prime location. It was right next to the main location. Today we've seen the Vidyanagar Chhatralai. This is exactly where the Swami was doing the Bhumi Pujan over there. And both Yogi Bapa and Pramukh Swami very, very pleased with the location and the, the land that was, uh, that was donated. And it may have seemed like a, a very normal Pujan, but how was anyone to ever know that the seeds that had been sowed were for a very historic era in BAPS? Because this was the beginning of the BAPS Chhatralai, from where today so many sadhus and karyakas throughout the world we know are giving their seva to the sansta. From Vidyanagar, Pramukh Sahib Maharaj then went to Ghana. Ghana is Harman Kaka's uh, native village, and so he went there to pay his respects to the recently departed Harman Kaka. And then he offered his condolences and comfort to all the family members over there. This was, this was Swami Sri's family. It was Shastriji Maharaj, such a close family to Shastriji Maharaj. And therefore, for Pramukh Sahib Maharaj also, it was just a very close, it was his own family. And that's why Swami had actually gone to Ghana to visit the family as well. Let's move on to G6 now. So after uh, spending some time in Ghana, Pramukh Sahib Maharaj then went to Atladra. And from Atladra, he had to begin a 15-day vicharan in the Kanam and the Wakad region. Kanam and Wakad, this is the region where actually Pramukh Sahib Maharaj, which chance that comes in the Kanam area. So Pramukh Sahib Maharaj had a 15-day vicharan in this region. And with him was a group of 30 sadhus and haribhaktos. A group of haribhaktos and sadhus, a total of 30 of them. They were all traveling with Pramukh Sahib Maharaj during this vicharan. Swami went to Maneja and then from there he went to Goriad. Here he delivered a katha on the Hari Lirambarat in the evening. And as soon as Pramukh Sai Maharaj is finished speaking, Yogiji Maharaj was so excited and Yogiji Maharaj then complimented him. And he said to everybody, Ke, Pramukh Sai Maharaj no rag bau saro. Shastri Ji Maharaj bhakta chinta mani na das das prakrano teo paase vanchave. Motani drashti pade etle ava guno ave. Lots of compliments for Pramukh Sai Maharaj. And we can see just from these words how pleased Yogi Bapa was in just listening to Pramukh Sai Maharaj's Katha. And after the Katha, Yogi Baba would actually ask individual Hari Bhaktos, did you listen to Pramukh Sai Maharaj's Katha? Did you listen to Pramukh Sai Maharaj's Katha? Again, another very uh, uh, expression of the joy that Yogi Baba had in listening to Pramukh Sai Maharaj's Katha. Now from Goryad, Pramukh Sai Maharaj had to travel for another 15 days. And in those 15 days, Pramukh Sai Maharaj traveled approximately 25 villages. Now Yogi Baba was also with Pramukh Sai Maharaj during this time. They went to Mubapur, Sarsavani, Padra, Vanasara, Jambusar, Nodana, Samoj, Nahar, Kimoj, Amod, Thikarya, Sarban, Simalya, Matroj, Dhavat, Kandari, so many other villages, Salad, Lingstari, Ajitpura, all these other villages. We can imagine 25 villages in a span of 15 days and Yogi Bapa was with him as well. Now the roads very dusty, very rough roads as well. So you can imagine it wasn't a, you know, a, a smoother journey as it could have been, as we would have wanted it to be. And moreover, it wasn't just Padramnis, but he had to do Katha, Padramni, and everywhere they went, there was also Nagar Yatra, processions with them as well. Pramukh Sai Maharaj's accommodation sometimes, not, much, not many facilities at that time as well. Nevertheless, both Yogi Bapa and Pramukh Sai Maharaj, they would embrace these difficulties because this is something that they loved and enjoyed doing. Eventually, on the 6th of April, 1964, Pramukh Sai Maharaj then came to Rajkot. Again, he began another seven-day parayan on the Satsangi Jeevan at the Lohana Majanwadi. Now, it's interesting to think that every time I keep saying that, oh, he did a Padramani, he did a parayan, he did a parayan. The question that begs to be answered is, when would he prepare for all these parayans? Because it's, Nishkwan Sami has said something very nicely, Van vichare ave vato ena antarathi. 
for Swami, it was Bhagwan speaking through him. And that's why every time, it didn't require much preparation for him. He just got onto the mic and he spoke. What he spoke was Sri Ji Maharaj speaking through him. Let's move on to G7. Now, while Swami was traveling and he did the Parayan in Rajkot, that's when uh, Harman Kaka's son, Mukund Bhai, so he was living in America when his father actually passed away. So he had arrived to Rajkot to meet Pramukh Sai Maharaj eventually. And after tra he went to Kenya because uh, to, to complete his father's uh, final rites in Nairobi. And then he came to India with the, with the ashes, with the cremated ashes in his hand. Now after the morning's parayan, Pramukh Sai Maharaj then took Mukund Bhai to Gondal. And he took him for darshan to the Akshadari. And eventually they did the final vidhi over there. And then that same night, Pramukh Sai Maharaj then came back to Rajkot. The next day, Pramukh Sai Maharaj left for Gadara. He took Mukund Bhai with him again. Pramukh Sai Maharaj had arranged for Mukund Bhai to perform the Asti Visarjan of his father's ashes in the Holy River in Gela. That was the whole idea. Gela Nadima, Asti Padravanata. And then from there, Swami took Mukund Bhai to every other prasadi place in Gadara, to both, the, both mandirs. And in both places, Pramukh Sai Maharaj would explain all the divine prasangs and the lila of Bhagavan Swami Narayan, of Shastri Ji Maharaj, of Yogi Ji Maharaj. And he would explain to Mukund Bhai a very significant place. Also, he would encourage him to do darshan, to do dhanvats. We can see Swami also guiding and teaching these yuvaks and these Hari Bhaktos. And he did the same in the other mandir as well. So all the mandirs that he, that he went, he would do this. Pramukh Sai Maharaj took real good care of Mukund Bhai. He would even sit him down, sit with him. But he would offer him while he's eating as well, give him some food to eat as well, arrange for his accommodation. Mukund Bhai was very touched by the love and the care that was expressed by Pramukh Sai Maharaj. In all, on the one hand, we see Pramukh Sai Maharaj fully engaged in these sabhas, padramani, but at the same time, the ability to take so much time out for one individual and give full attention and full care, it was almost like a father looking after his son. And that same evening, Pramukh Sai Maharaj then took Mukund Bhai to Sarangpur and then again gave him a full tour of the place. Now you can just imagine, Pramukh Sai Maharaj, you couldn't get a better tour guide to give you a tour of all these three mandirs, Gondal, Gadra, and Sarangpur. But Pramukh Sai Maharaj again took two and a half days of his time just to make sure he took care of Mukund Bhai. And you know what? Mukund Bhai had completely forgotten about the pain that his father was no longer with him. This is the love and affection that Pramukh Sai Maharaj showered upon all these yuvaks and these Hari Bhaktos. And I think many Hari Bhaktos have experienced very similar love and affection from Pramukh Sai Maharaj. Let's move on to G8. So from Sarangpur, Pramukh Sai Maharaj then went to Amdavad to celebrate the Hari Janti celebrations over there. And as soon as the Utsa was over, now just remember Hari Janti means it's a Nirjada Upas, a waterless fast. As soon as the Utsa was over, Pramukh Sai Maharaj then left for Vasna Bursad because he had a Parayan on the Hari Lilamrat on the very next morning. So the whole day traveling, you can imagine how incredible this Vicharan was because then he had Nirjada Upas and next morning, the Parayan on the Hari Lilamrat was to begin. And while delivering the Parayan, Pramukh Sai Maharaj was also preparing for the upcoming festival of the Chaitri Punam in Bochasan. So multiple projects happening at the same time. But Pramukh Sai Maharaj was very, very alert and very active in taking care of all the Hari Bhaktas who attended these festivals. From Vasna Borsad, eventually Pramukh Sai Maharaj went to Bochasan. He would make sure he was there much earlier, a couple of days earlier prior to the festival. He would familiarize himself with the arrangements and everything else with the organizers and make sure that everything was ready to go. The following day, which was the 27th of April, at 10.30 a.m. was the groundbreaking ceremony of the construction of the BAPS Chhatrale in Vidyanagar. So one project after another project after another project. The BAPS Chhatrale in a groundbreaking ceremony on the 27th of April that was taking place in Vidyanagar. This occasion was attended by dignitaries like Sri Bhailal Bhai Patel, who was fondly known as Bhai Kaka. He was one of the founders of the educational town for Vallabh Vidyanagar. Along with him was also Ishwar Bhai Patel, who was the vice chancellor for the Sardar Patel University. So these are the dignitaries that had actually visited at that time. And after the ceremony was over, a seven day long Shram Yagna, a Shram Shibir had been organized to perform intense, very heavy physical seva, which involved the digging and the laying of the hostel, and the foundation. We can see Pramukh Sai Maharaj's image on the slide over there, that Swami is also involved in this seva. You know, almost 500 youths from all over, from Mumbai, Bharuch, Surat, Vadodara, 
Sokhra, Amdavad, and other parts of Shaurasht had all joined in this uh, Shram Yagna. Pramukh Sai Maharaj himself had also joined uh, in, in this Seva as well. From there, Swami Shri then, once this was over, after the, the, Shribir, the, the Shram Shribir, Pramukh Sai Maharaj then left Vidyanagar and eventually visited Vartals um, and then went to Atladra, eventually attaining, uh, attending to Vasna Kotarya. On the 3rd of May, in this village, he began another Parayan, which was on the, on the Satsangi Jeevan. So you can see the, the scriptures are also changing. Hari Lila Amrat, Hari, Hari Lila Kalpataru, Satsangi Jeevan, all these different scriptures Swami is doing. And then on the one end, you see him doing Seva like you see in the image over here. And on the next day, he's sitting on the Vyaspit, delivering a seven-day Parayan on something like the Satsangi Jeevan. Incredible personality. After the Parayan was over, Pramukh Sai Maharaj then went to Amdavad where he stayed for a few days to just accommodate for all the Hari Bhaktos and again engage them in lots of uh, Kathavarta, some Padramis as well. From there, Pramukh Sai Maharaj then went on to Mumbai. Let's look at G9 now. So while Swami was in Mumbai, there was a businessman by the name of Chandravan Sharma from the Pawai area, which is in Mumbai. And he wanted to donate a piece of his own farmland, which was in Pawai, to the mandir. So that something, you know, the mandir could be built on this area. But he also wanted to hold a parayan and perform a yagna on the same piece of land to mark this occasion. So, on the 14th of May, 1964, Pramukh Sai Maharaj began another parayan. And the sadhus from the, from the mandir, from, Darba, uh, from the Dadar mandir would often, you know, come there. They would do the rituals, the mantras for the, um, for the yagna over there as well. And so that's how uh, the yagna took place over there as well. Now, the anniversary of Shastriji Maharaj's uh, passing away also fell on the first day of this Parayan and the yagna. And so on this occasion, which was on the 15th of May, which is the next day, Yogiji Maharaj gave blessings. And Yogi Bapa said, Bochasan Sanstama so bhanela sadhu tayyar thai ane Narayan Swami meaning Pramukh Swami Maharaj ni agna sau paade, te a Shastri Ji Maharaj ni tithi no ashirvaad che. On the day of Shastri Ji Maharaj passing away, on that tithi, on that date, Yogi Ji Maharaj is remembering Shastri Ji Maharaj, but at the same time, he's talking about the greatness of Pramukh Sai Maharaj. It's very interesting how he says that Narayan Swami ni agna ma sau, everybody should follow Narayan Swami's agna, meaning Pramukh Sai Maharaj's agna. Te a Shastri Ji Maharaj ni tithi no ashirvaad che. Now, during the days of this Parayan, Yogiji Maharaj, Mota Swami, Pramukh Sai Maharaj, and a few others were once returning to Dadar from, the, from this Pawai area. And Pramukh Sai Maharaj mentioned that, Swami, according to the planned program, uh, we had to visit the ashram of Chinmayanan Swami. We're supposed to go and visit Chinmayanan Swami. And immediately, you know, a senior Hari Bhakta was sitting over there, just very begrudgingly said, what's the need? Why do we need to go over there? And he was very agitated with this. But immediately, you know, Yogiji Maharaj sided with Pramukh Sai Maharaj and he went ahead with the plan of visiting this ashram. So they did go and visit the Chinman and Swami ashram. You, you know, one thing we noticed on this is Yogi Bapa and Pramukh Sai Maharaj were a great team. They always aligned with each other's wishes. You know, Pramukh Sai Maharaj would often say, Ke marone Yogi Ji marone Yogi Ji kyare juda padhyanathi. And we could see the same thing with Yogi Bapa. He always made sure that him and Pramukh Sai Maharaj were on the same page. Pramukh Sai Maharaj was the president. Yogi Bapa was the Guru, but we can see the alignment in their vichars. On the 20th of May, after completing this Parayan in Pawai, Pramukh Sai Maharaj along with Magan Bhai and Harshad Bhai then finally visited a government office to register and legalize the documents for the donated uh, farmhouse land. And in one week, we can imagine why Pramukh Sai Maharaj was in Mumbai. He did the Parayan as well as uh, signed the deal for the land as well. And then on the 21st of May, Yogi Ji Maharaj and Pramukh Sai Maharaj, they left Mumbai by train on the Gujarat Express, eventually traveled to Vadwan, they went to Amdavad, and then from there they went to Vadwan. There's a mandir in Vadwan as well, the Akshar Poshutam, they did mandir, they did darshan of the Akshar Poshutam Maharaj at the mandir in the Swaminan Mandir over there, and from there they traveled to Surendranagar, and eventually went to Rajkot, and then finally Gondal. On Vaisak Sud Dasam, which marked the 30th anniversary of Gondal's Akshar Mandir, which is on the 21st of May, note the date, 21st of May, 1964, a huge celebration took place over there. And everybody was deeply engrossed in, the, in reminiscing 
the efforts of Shastriji Maharaj, the way he made this mandir. And everybody was very much remembering all this. And then also talking about Yogi Ji Maharaj. Even Yogi Bapa was very involved in all this. But on that same day, very incidentally, it was also 14 years previously on this date that Pramukh Sai Maharaj was made the president of the Sansta. But for Pramukh Sai Maharaj, it wasn't a big deal. It wasn't even, under, uh, it didn't even make it onto his diary. Something like, he wasn't even remembering any of this. He was so engulfed and eng uh, engrossed in remembering his Guru Shastriji Maharaj that the date didn't make too much of a difference to him whether he was Pramukh or not on that day. Now, during his stay in Gondal, Pramukh Sai Maharaj eventually then visited Bandhya, Navagam, Ghogavadar, all the villages nearby. You know, as they say, the river will keep on flowing. We can see Pramukh Sai Maharaj Vicharan just carried on. While they were in Gondal, they received the news that the Prime Minister of India, Jawaharlal Nehru, had actually passed away on the 27th of May, 1964. So as a gesture of peace for the departed soul, Yogiji Maharaj then asked Pramukh Sai Maharaj to do another parayan on the Hari Lila Kalpataru at the Akshadari on the 1st of June. And a seven-day parayan then concluded on the 7th of June, which was on the same day as Yogiji Maharaj's 73rd birth anniversary. So they celebrated that after that. No sooner had Pramukh Sai Maharaj completed this parayan in Gondal, he was then scheduled to visit Manavadar for another parayan. So a three-day parayan. So we can see Vicharan, Padramani's back-to-back parayans. A three-day parayan on the Harilila Kalpataru had now been organized on this occasion for the inauguration of the, and the Murti Pratishta of a new mandir over here in Manavadar. So one parayan after another parayan. Again, when does he have time to prepare? After the completion of this parayan, and the Mandir inauguration ceremony in Manavadar, Pramukh Sai Maharaj then carried on to Junagad and Gadda and eventually got to Sarangpur. And Yogi Ji Maharaj then carried on. He stayed in Junagad. Very hectic Vichran. Let's move on to G10. Now, while Yogi Bapa was in Junagad, very spontaneously one day, while he was talking to the youths and the sadhus, Pramukh Sai, uh, Yogi Ji Maharaj said something very nice. Yogi Bapa, was, Yogi Bapa said to the youths, नहीं शास्त्रीजी महाराज गया जनती आप प्रमुख स्वामी एमनु साक्षात स्वरूप छे एम मनाए तो काम थे ही जाए नारायण स्वामी ने शास्त्रीजी महाराजे पोतेज पोताना स्थाने नीमिया अने प्रमुख बनाविया आगर तो प्रमुख स्वामी ने मडवानु कठन थे ही जस कठन थे ही पड़े शे एमना द्वारा महाराज मोटा मोटा कार्यो कर शे जगत मा अक्षर पुरुषो Pramukh Sai Maharaj completed that prophecy. We can see, and we can see the mahima, the glory that Yogi Ji Maharaj was talking about Pramukh Sai Maharaj at that time. Yogi Ji Maharaj was very, very straightforward in his words, and we could see that he was gradually unraveling the secrets uh, of a very bright and beautiful future for BAPS. It was as if Yogi Bapa, you know, he could see a golden age of BAPS under Swami Sri's leadership. And hearing these words, everybody recognized and felt very fulfilled with Yogi Baba's words, like with priceless wisdom. Let's move on to G11. While Pramukh Swami was in Sarangpur, he had actually found out that a small issue had taken place um, and it was drawn to his attention. One of the sevaks who was in the mandir had become very upset due to an argument with someone else. And as a result, with an intention to shame the opponent, this particular person had started going on to a, had started performing a fast. And so while doing darshan, Swami Pramukh Sai Maharaj came to Sarampur. He did darshan in the mandir, did darshan in Shastri Maharaj's Smriti Mandir. And immediately he sat immediately he sat down with this individual. He listened to everything that he had to say. This was very typical of Pramukh Sai Maharaj, a great listener. He always listened first and then he spoke. And this is why Pramukh Sai Maharaj was so approachable. He made it very, very easy for people to open up to him. Very patiently, Pramukh Sai Maharaj listened to everything without passing any judgment or making that person feel guilty or compromised in any way. And then Swami then explained the Mahima of Seva and dedicating oneself to Shastri Ji Maharaj and Yogi Ji Maharaj, 
doing seva in the sanstar and then eventually just leaving everything, all the consequences to the will of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. The way Pramukh Swami Maharaj explained everything, immediately the sevak realized his own mistake and that he had lost his way. And immediately then he reassured Pramukh Swami Maharaj, you know, that he's going to break his fast the next morning. And so the next morning, after doing puja and darshan in the mandir, that sevak actually then came into the kitchen to break his fast. But guess what? Pramukh Swami Maharaj was waiting there for him. Pramukh Swami Maharaj had prepared a glass of uh, sweet lemon juice or lime juice for this uh, sevak and he offered it to him. Again, motherly care from the Guru. On the early morning of the 25th of June, there was a lunar eclipse, which was visible from 4.30 to 3.30 a.m. And very typical of Pramukh Sai Maharaj, according to the, the um, Agna of Bhagwan Swaminarayan, Pramukh Sai Maharaj made sure that a sabha was held with bhajan, kirtan, katha, with all the sadhus and the devotees that were in the mandir at that time. The presence of Pramukh Sai Maharaj during this such, such a long sabha at such ungodly hours just made it more interesting because Pramukh Sai Maharaj was there as well. Eventually, Pramukh Sai Maharaj then left for Amdavad and he then he was off to Makrana. In Makrana, Pramukh Sai Maharaj, he needed to purchase the marble for the construction and renovation for the mandirs in Karida, in Amdavad, Gondal and Sarangpur. While in Makrana, Swami would make sure he would visit every single mine, every single site, dealing with all sorts of people. And we've talked about this, how difficult it was in those days, the heat, everything like that. Meals and sleep times were completely compromised. There was no fixed time to eat, no food fixed to eat, no sleeping times. But this was the way Pramukh Swami Maharaj worked. This was his seva. He spent five days in Makrana, he visited Jaipur and then he went to Bochasan. Bochasan, the reason for going to Bochasan was to celebrate the Guru Purnam, uh, Guru Purnam festivities on the 24th of July, again in the presence of Yogi Ji Maharaj. From Bochasan, then Swami Sri then carried on, he went, his vision carried on. He went to Padgol, Merao, Vidyanagar, Anand, Thasra, Dakor, Nadiad, Daban, all these villages, almost eight towns in one day. Swami villages, village visited almost eight towns in one day, eventually then made his way to Amdavad. Again, very grueling. It's almost as if he completed a week-long task in just one day. And after finishing all this work in Amdavad, Pramukh Sai Maharaj then went back to Vidyanagar. Now what was happening in Vidyanagar? Puja Mahan Sai Maharaj and Ishwar Charan Swami had also been called in to Vidyanagar. They had all traveled from Mumbai. The plan over here was all three of them, they got together to review a model of the Murti of Shastri Ji Maharaj. That was, uh, that was in the process at that time. And so all three of them looked at that that murti, just to make sure they gave the final touches to that murti as well. After that, Pramukh Sai Maharaj then traveled to Vasad, Amdavad, Vadwan, Surendranagar and Rajkot. Eventually, they came to Gondal. Again, several construction projects were taking place in Gondal. That's why Swami was there. Swami looked at all this stuff, all these uh, work activities that was going on there for two, three days. And after providing necessary suggestions, eventually Swami then left Gondal, went to Gadda, Sarangpur, Amdavad and eventually Swami then got to Piprao. We'll uh, end today's session over here. Shri Swaminarayan Bhagwanani Jai.